So really kind of a review day today, we're going to talk about rate of change and slope, but in actuality, the rate of change is the slope. So once again, rate of change is the slope, or a ratio that describes how much one quantity changes with respect to another. We're used to seeing slope written as change in y over the change in x, or the difference in y's over the difference in x, or if I have points, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, you could do it the other way, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, doesn't matter. And then usually with slope we write equations of lines. There's a standard form where we have ax plus by is equal to c, and you have to note that uh, a, b, and c are all integers, a has got to be greater than zero, never a negative, and there can't be a GCF between a, b, or c. And then finally the one we're most used to is a slope intercept, y equals mx plus b, where m is a slope, and b is the y-intercept. So that's kind of the definitions of everything we're going to look at. So if I want to write the equation of a line passing through the points, since I didn't specify which equation I want to write, I usually go slope-intercept pretty much all the time. So I want to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, I've got 7 minus 4 over negative 2 minus 8. That gets me my slope which in this case is going to be 3 over negative 10 or negative 3 tenths. So I have y equals negative 3 tenths x plus b. Given that, I have an x and a y that I have unknown as well as a b. In order to write this equation, I need a value for m and B, since I have M, I need to find B, which means I need a point to plug in. And I can take either of these two points, X and Y, and plug them in. I'll just use the two positives. So I've got a value of 4 for Y. I've got a value of 8 for X. And I'm solving for B. So in this case, that's 24 over 10, which is 12 over 5. That's negative is equal to, I'm going to go 20 over 5, put it in common denominators. So B in this case is going to equal 32 over 5. Therefore, my slope-intercept equation is Y equals negative 3 tenths X plus 32 over 5. Moving to the next example, we want to write the equation of a line passing through a specific point and parallel to a line with the following equation. When we talk about parallel lines, we know from Algebra 1 they have the same slope. All right. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is find the slope of this line, thus getting the slope-intercept equation form. I have 2y equals negative 7x plus 4. Divide by 2, so y equals negative 7 halves x plus 2. The only thing that's really important here is that slope. I know m equals negative 7 over 2, so therefore the parallel slope is negative 7 over 2. And just like the last problem, we now have y equals negative 7 halves x plus b. They give us a point of negative 3, 5 that this parallel line goes through. So I plug in 5 for y. And we'll take and plug in negative 3 for x. And once again, solve for b. I've got 21 over 2 plus b equals 10 halves. Again, getting the common denominator. Bring the 21 over, so I have negative 11 over 2 is equal to b. And y equals that slope of negative 7 halves x minus 11 over 2. So now we're going to write the equation of line passing through a point, but this time we're going to be perpendicular to a line with the following equation. Perpendicular lines we know 
have opposite reciprocal slopes. So therefore I know that the slope of that line, since it's already in slope intercept form, is negative four thirds. Perpendicular slope is going to be the opposite reciprocal of that. So I've got a positive three fourths. And then as in our previous examples, y equals negative three fourths x plus b. I now need a point to plug in, which I've got. Four is my y. 3 fourths the slope times 20 for my x plus b. You end up with those reducing and I get 15 plus b is equal to 4 and negative 11 is equal to b. Therefore y equals the perpendicular slope is 3 fourths x minus 11. A little bit different, we're going to write the equation of line passing through the point 1, 8, and it's perpendicular to a line with an equation of x equals negative 14. So we note that's not necessarily in slope intercept form, it's a special line. And if we remember, x equals lines are basically vertical in nature. So here's my line of x equals negative 14 which means every x value is 14. If I have a perpendicular to that, then my perpendicular to this line is horizontal. And it goes through the point 1, 8. So let's call this the point 1, 8. If I have a horizontal line that's perpendicular, we need the equation of this horizontal line. Well, on a horizontal line, all the y values are the same, and y is just equal to 8. Problem done easy enough. So, so this problem is a little bit different in that we're asked to find the average rate of change or as we've been talking about the slope, this guy right here is the slope, of a function, not of a line, but of a function over a specific interval. And remember our rate of change is the slope between two points. Now the problem is we don't have two points. This looks like two points of negative two and one or that single point, negative two and one. But it's not. It's basically two x values. We have x1 to x2 because this is interval notation. So in order to write the average rate of change of this function, I have to have the two y points corresponding to these two x points. We can see it a little bit better in a graph. So here's a graph of the pi picture. I have my parabola. I have a point at 1 and I have some point over here at negative 2 going way up but it goes off the graph so we can't see it. So I need to find kind of the slope of that line connecting those two points. So I better find my y values associated with x values of 1 and negative 2. When I plug in 1 I get out 1 and when I plug in negative 2 that gives me a positive 12 and 4 which is 16. So now I've got my x values here and I've got my y values right up here. So if I go y2 minus y1 that's 16 minus 1 over x2 which is negative 2 minus x1 which is 1 I get 15 over negative 3 which is basically negative 5 and we're done. And as you can see, it looks like I got a slope of roughly over to the left one and up five from there. And that's the slope of negative five. So kind of worked out. And like I said, you aren't always going to have this graph to go with the function. You can thus calculate the y values for the x values by just plugging and chugging. All right. That's all we've got today. Everything's centered around slope, equations of lines and this new idea of rate of change or average rate of change.